Being in love is something that we all want, so why are we so bad at it? I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was raised on fairy tales. Boy meets girl, they fall in love, they overcome some obstacle, and then they live happily ever after. That literally never happens. What if we think everything that a relationship is and could be is completely wrong? What if there was so much more to it that we could have that we're missing out on because we're just missing the target? We're aiming at the wrong thing. In my 20s, I, I knew I wanted to get married. The way that I was dating didn't really reflect the type of relationship that I wanted to have when I got married. So that led me to the question, who is doing this right? Who has a great relationship that isn't talking about it? So I decided to quit my job, sell everything I own, and spend the better part of a year visiting 15 states and interviewing over 100 couples. I would sit down with a couple and I would hear their story and I would just think to myself, I didn't know that this existed. Like, I didn't know a relationship this good was possible. And it gave me insights into how to create that type of love, which was really awesome. Nobody had ever taught me how to have the type of marriage that I wanted. You never get a class on this kind of thing in college or in high school. So where do you go to get answers? You've got self-help books over here, you've got therapy over here, and there's nothing in the middle. But the problem with all of those resources is that they're focused mainly on teaching you knowledge, which is great, but those things don't do you any good unless you actually take action on them. So I believe that one of the biggest gaps between an ordinary couple and an extraordinary couple is extraordinary couples are action takers, not just insight chasers. When you bump into your first struggle in a relationship, you might think, I think I'm with the wrong person. What if I chose the wrong person? Get rid of that mindset. It does not serve you. It's not gonna help you get where you wanna go. Being in a relationship inherently exposes you to your deepest insecurities and your biggest flaws, the things that make you most uncomfortable and vulnerable. And that's okay. Some of the most rewarding things in life are the things that are most difficult. I would argue that happiness is not the right goal for a relationship. When you pursue happiness as a goal in your relationship, it's all about what can I get out of it. It's all about making your partner responsible for the quality of your relationship. But you have no control over that. You don't have control over their feelings, their words, their thoughts, their moods, but you have control over all of those things for yourself. When you pursue growth, it's all about what you can control personally to contribute to the overall quality of the relationship. There is an ideal ecosystem for your relationship to grow. You need a clear ideal to strive for, somebody to learn from. You need regular nourishment, and you need to be grounded in a good community, the people that you spend the most time with. The skills you learn inside of a romantic relationship apply directly to every other relationship in your life. If you learn great communication skills or conflict management skills inside of your romantic relationship, it's gonna apply to work, it's gonna apply to your friendships, it'll apply to every other aspect of your life. Imagine what that would do for your community, for your workplace, for your country, or for the world. Can you imagine how cool that, like, how much it would transform our world if everybody was just really good at relationships? This is something that you can control and it has a huge impact on your happiness and your quality of life and nothing matters more. The only way to transform your relationship is to transform yourself. The only way to change your relationship is to change yourself. The only way to improve your relationship is to improve yourself.